All right, so here we have another guide on Ultimate Mars Capcom 3, and today I present to you Zero. Sorry guys, I know. I'm going to expose how cheap this character is. Right now, right? Basics, what? I shouldn't even put basics, I should just put play. Play with Zero. Anyway, his crouching A and his standing A are four frames. They have a ton of range for four frame moves. His stand B and his crouch B are both 8 frames. As you can see, they have a ton of range. The crouch B is a low, as well as the crouch A. His standing C is a multiple hitting attack. Up to 3 hits, you can see here. His crouch C will put the opponent in a slight juggle state. It's almost like a trip. And you can launch off of it. You can launch off of any one of the buttons, except for S, of course. His forward C is a multi-rushing attack. If you're looking for the option select when you're close to your opponent, it'll give you a grab or give you that move. So, his launcher, his S, has a ton of range, as you can see there. It almost goes as far as a stand C and can be used as an anti-air. I don't see anyone doing this, so I had to mention it. I know that Zero's buster shot is not a normal, but since it's used as one of his primary footsie tools, I'm going to put it in this section. You have the level 1 buster, level 2, and level 3 busters, and these can all be done in the air. So... There you have it for his normals. Let's move on to specials. So, we're going to start with the Honda Key L, M, and H. The L version has really fast recovery but travels across the screen slow. The M version travels a little bit faster and the Fierce version has the most durability and travels across the screen quite slow. The Hanak Hankiaku, however you say that, is a teleport. The L version teleports a short distance forward the M version teleports a short distance I mean not even a short distance it actually travels a lot further than the L version and the H version will shoot skyrocket you into the sky the L version in the air will bring you down to the ground the M version will send you straight across this does have the ability to pass through opponents by the way and the H version will just skyrocket you further into the sky if it is done in the air and you can attack after coming out of the teleport animation Ryujin is an uppercut it looks in remnants of a Shoryuken. You can do the L, M, or H version. Each version does a bit more damage than the other one, and it contains a bit of priority and invincibility, so you can actually throw that out there, but it's completely unsafe on block. I don't know how to pronounce this move, so I'm not going to, but it's whatever. It's Zero's Dive Kick, AKA Dive Kick. Uh, the medium punch version is plus two on block. I'm not sure how much priority or uh, frame advantage the first version has on block, but it does go a lot further in angle than the M version in the air. And the L version absolutely goes nowhere. It's almost like a fake out. And you can use that move to OTG if you have a charge buster. Now, Rakosin is this lightning strip, as you can see here. Uh, Zero will dash across the screen. The L version goes down diagonal. The M version goes across, and the H version goes upward. If you have a buster shot, you can cancel out of it, releasing the lightning, even before Zero travels anywhere. The lightning will only hit after Zero has reached his end point. All right, so for the first assist that we have for Zero, we have the Honda Key. It doesn't have, it's Honda Key B, by the way. Now. It doesn't have a ton of durability. It will lose in most projectile wars to the other superior projectile characters. I'm not saying Zero's, you know, he lacks superiority in a projectile war, but Honda Key's not gonna save you. But what it can be used for is, you know, rush down play. You wanna cross your opponent up? That's the way to go. Now, Honda Key and Shadow Clone mode will give you a double Honda Key. The Shadow Clone will come out and follow Zero accordingly and fire two. You can also use that for rushdown. I wouldn't use it to win a projectile war. We have Ryujin A. I'm not even sure. I think that's Ryujin B, to be honest with you. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, if you have a character like Dante or maybe Doom, you can capitalize off the Ryujin by causing a hard knockdown or because it does put the opponent in a juggle state. So you can go ahead and follow up a combo accordingly. Now, Ryujin in Shadow Clone mode actually contains some invincibility due to the fact that the Shadow Clone will follow Zero on the first frame of the uppercut, but he will follow Zero's movements and he will get he will get knocked down after. I have Hagar here as proof. As you can see, we have the Shapuga now. It's uh, his forward rush rushing uh, attack, which is forward C. He'll come out and in Shadow Clone mode, the Shadow, once again, will follow in uh, Zero's footsteps, and but 
he'll follow in his footsteps to completion, meaning if he gets hit, he'll be knocked out of it. But at least you get have that get me off, uh, get off of me assist, you know? So now we're dancing around with zero here. And you have your buster charged, right? Remember I told you about his teleports, how they have the ability to pass through opponents? That's what you really want to concentrate on. You have to really get used to a technique called buster switching. Now, maybe I dubbed it that, or maybe that's what it's known as in the community, but buster switching is the ability to hold down one button and never lose your charge by switching to other buttons, by having act. So let's say I needed access to my Rakusen L, as you saw just now. That means I'm holding the C button, meaning that I would do release, but I would actually do Rakusen L, release Buster Rakusen L. You also need to make use of his teleports. So watch where you are at certain angles. He will cross up. Zero is very dangerous for this. He's a pixie character with range. So we have Zero's hypers here. We have the, give me the name, give me the name, get it. We have the Rekoha, which is an OTG capable super. Uh, by the way, I just call it Skittles. And we have the Soy Genmo, right? And remember, that first super, only use it to end combos. It's not really useful as for anything else. But it will shield you if you try to DHC. Anyway, this will give uh, Zero a Shadow Clone that shortly follows him after a couple of frames. So you can do some really cool combos with that. We have the Genmu Zero, which is my personal favorite level 3 in all of the game. It'll counteract any other projectile. It has 100 high durability points and only takes 300k. Okay, so we got Zero's combos and his bread and butters, right? Now, this character by himself doesn't actually deal a lot of damage. You'll see that from the, hopefully, the first bread and butter. Yeah, the first bread and butter, you'll see that by himself. I mean, for a pixie character, to be honest with you, who moves really, really fast and has a ton of range, he can deal quite some damage by himself. Okay. Now, you guys are like, 592, I can do that without a super. I mean, but think about it. He's more likely to get the hit before you are. Right here, the second combo, just to mention, I'll give you guys a little mid-screen, uh, what you're supposed to do mid-screen. Uh, I just maxed out 538 there. Now, this is what happens when Zero does have an assist. And since you can't stop him from picking an assist in this game because he's going to automatically have a team, uh, well... This is where the damage starts to really rack up because of his ability to OTG when he wants to. Boom, boom. He just maxed out 1 million. Oh, that makes me look like a liar. Anyway, I normally do a mil. I don't know what happened there. But he maxed out 1, well, 993. He killed most of the cast just with two assists. And he killed some of the cast with no assist at all. All right, so LOL moving on to... Zero's synergy and team assist analysis. To be honest with you, I would just tell you guys, pick whoever you wanted and use whatever assist you want. But let's be mature about this. You can pick Akuma Tatsumaki, Virgil's Rapper Slash to extend some combos and for some mix-up potential. Jam Session is always going to be there, okay? And you can use Plasma Beam with Doom. Everyone should be using Plasma Beam with Doom. And you could use Sentinel Force Charge if you really, really want to, you know, go celebrity status, win EVO or something, you know, win the next major. Go ahead. Why not? Ooh, look at what we have here. We have the advanced positioning and tactic section for Zero. Wow, this is like an anomaly. I don't know. Why does he need this? Simple. Just hold down the buster charge and do things. All right, all, right, all, right, all jokes aside, zip around, guys. Do not be afraid, okay? Just go in, but don't go in recklessly. Zero is more likely to get scrubbed out, if anything, because of his low health. He just gets tagged from random things. Why? Because most Zeros don't pick and choose their spots. You gotta pick and choose your spots with this character. He can only attack at front, upward diagonal, and straight across, if anyone ever noticed. He has three angles that he can cover. That's up diagonal, once again, straight across, and down diagonal. I don't think I mentioned that the first time. But keep in mind, that's his attack ranges in the air. And keep in mind, on the ground, he's a horizontal fighter. He doesn't have the ability to actually protect that angle uh, up, of, up forward. So keep in mind to always keep a buster charge so that when you do use Rikosin or any one of your special moves, you can quickly cancel out of it so you can change your position. Positioning is the key with zero. For those who don't do this, don't win with zero, and that's the whole point. 
uh, you'll find that you'll have a whole bunch of diversity when it comes to Zero. You have a whole bunch of players that want to, how do I say, one wants to zone and the other wants to rush down. It's got to be a little in between. You got to push your opponent where you want to. He has the ability to do that with the Buster Shot and Rikosin. So get it done. Don't forget, he also has uh, his own manual air dash, which can be done by pressing the uh, any one of the, or three of the attack buttons. But remember, you're going to be holding on Buster, so you're probably going to be using two. Keep in mind that his footsies are top notch, okay? He is some of the best footsies in the game. So use that with your Buster shot, and of course, learn how to lightning loop. I think it speaks for itself. You're going to have to Tiger Knee, Rokosim. After cutting on Shadow Clone, you have a couple of frames there to release Buster Shot to juggle your opponent. And that's how you get the Lightning Loop done. Please practice the Lightning Loop. It's the key to winning with Zero. I know a lot of people say that you can just pick a team and do less work and get the same results. But keep in mind that the Lightning Loop is the key to being scary with Zero. Because if someone knows that you'll always finish the Lightning Loop, that means you can touch and kill off a of one meter at any given time. Well, let's do a short review of what we looked at here today with Zero. His positives, he has crazy limb priority, tons of mobility. Uh, I wouldn't say he could win almost every zoning war, but he can win most. His negatives is that he has low life and there's absolutely nothing else that I have to say about his negatives. Uh, besides my opinion, I think he gets scrubbed out. That's why he doesn't win, you know, most majors. Uh, I can only account one major, and that was Flocker, and that was Phoenix. Uh, Zero gets scrubbed out. I think he's S-Class, but that's just my opinion. I was glad to bring this guy to you guys today uh, to break down Zero for you. Thank you for watching. Seriously, I appreciate all you guys that watch. Thanks for watching, as I said before. Till next time.